So you've heard about this amazing new structured logger that comes with Go 1.21 S-Log. And now you want to become a pro logger. I didn't want to work in a pet shop. I wanted to be a lumberjack. Yes, a lumberjack! Leaping from tree to tree as they float down the mighty rivers of British Columbia. And of course, that means testing. So how do you test your code that uses the new S-Log package? You mock it, right? You're mocking me, aren't you? No. Please, do not mock the S-Log package. I will not be mocked! When testing code that uses external packages, like the S-Log package, a common practice is to use a mock. We have many third-party mocking libraries out there that make this relatively straightforward. But mocking is an often overused practice. The overuse of mocks can lead to tight coupling between your tests and your implementation details. When you should be testing behaviors, not implementations, using mocks often adds another dependency, the mocking library you're using, and it adds additional code you have to maintain, the mock code itself. And just generally speaking, mocks add complexity to your code. And in many simple cases, like S-Log, that's complexity you just don't need. If you truly love me, then why do you insist on mocking me so? So what's the alternative? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's what I'll be showing you in this video. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button. And of course, if you learned something today, I hope you'll hit like as well. In this video, I'll be showing you how I always avoid mocks when I'm testing my code that depends on the S-Log library, or really any logging library for that matter. How? I change the conditions of the test. Now, the first thing you should be considering before choosing an approach for testing of anything, really, is what are you hoping to learn from the test? What would you hope to discover if the test fails? When it comes to logging, there are usually two potential answers to this question. The first answer is nothing. We just want our tests to pass. We're not trying to test the logger at all. We just want the program not to crash when it tries to call the logger. The second possible answer is that we want to test our logs, that we're sending the expected log messages with the expected priorities and so on and so forth. There is, of course, a third possibility that I won't really talk about in this video, and that is if you're actually building the logger or a log handler, then of course you want to be testing things like, is it producing the right output format, such as valid JSON? But in this video, I'm focused on the users of loggers, not the authors of loggers. So let's start by considering the first case. We don't actually want to test the logger at all, we just want the code to work that depends on a logger. This situation calls for what is often referred to as a stub. That is, we need an object that looks like a logger to our code. Uh, it has the right methods on it, it doesn't panic, but it doesn't actually log anywhere. It just discards the logs. A common approach to this general problem in Go is to create an interface. So we could create an interface that looks like our logger and then have all of our code that uses a logger accept that interface rather than accepting a concrete type. And then we create a, a stub implementation of the interface that just discards all logs. Here's an example of what that might look like. I've created a logger interface here that matches the slog.logger struct. And then I've created a sub implementation that just does nothing. You'll notice, however, that this isn't even a perfect implementation because a few of these methods return something that I'm not handling. The handler method returns a handler, and then with and with group are both intended to return a pointer to an S-log logger, which I'm just returning nil right now. So that actually means this could potentially panic depending on how the, the function is being used. If I wanted to truly stub this out with an interface, I would have to make this return a copy of this interface, which means I further would have to completely wrap all uses of slog.logger. It would be a big hassle and it's completely unnecessary as we'll see. This is an appropriate uh, approach in some cases, but in the case of slog, this is actually kind of annoying because it means we can no longer depend on the standard star slog.logger type. And instead we need to use a custom interface type. This could even be a deal breaker if you're trying to use third party code that accepts a standard logger because it won't accept your interface. There is fortunately a small improvement we could make Rather than implementing a stub logger, we could implement a stub handler. Then we could pass that stub handler to slog.new, and then we would have a concrete slog logger that we could pass around and use as normal, but it would just discard things. And this is an improvement. So here's my implementation of a stub handler. Now here I don't have to define the interface myself because it's already defined for me in the slog package. The slog.handler type is an interface. And it's much simpler than the uh, slog logger type anyway, it only has four methods on it, enabled, handle, with adders, and with group. So this is imminently better than the previous implementation. Uh, it's a complete implementation. Uh, it would actually work, it would never panic, uh, because it does return a proper handler when asked to. 
Uh, so this is a much better improvement, but we can still do better. But this is still extra code we have to write, and it's completely unnecessary. It's actually easy to tell the standard logger to just discard all logs. Uh, how? Let me show you. So here's a minimal test, testing a minimal function that uses the logger. So my function under test is just called some function, and all it does is log one line. Uh, so I want to make sure it doesn't panic, right? This is the secret sauce right here. We're using a proper slog logger with a proper slog handler. All we're doing is telling it to discard all the logs. Now the logger works, everything works as expected, but there's no output. And that's exactly what we wanted, right? So there you have it, a simple one-liner. It eliminates the entire need for mocking if all you're trying to do is make your code run. But what about the second example? What if you actually do want to check what logs were created and match them against your expectation? Well, that's almost as easy. I am relieved. So rather than sending the logs to io.discard, we just need to send those logs to a buffer. We can use a byte.buffer, for example, as I'll show you here. In this example, I've created a bytes.buffer value, and this is where I'm sending my log. This means that after I've called my function under test, I can do an assertion against the result held in that buffer. In this case, I'm just doing a strings.contains check to see if it contains the expected message. And you could, of course, use more detailed assertions if you want to. You could split your buffer by line if you have multiple lines of log output expected, and so on and so forth. Now, here's one last improvement that does a more strict check on the output. You notice that I've added the use of slog.handler options when creating my logger. And I've done this to use the replace adder attribute, which allows me to specify a function which replaces uh, attributes. In this case, I'm interested in replacing the time attribute with an empty attribute. This way, the timestamp is omitted from the log, making them more deterministic. So now I can do a check directly against the log I actually expect. So there you have it. Don't mock slog. Instead, just use slog and control its output destination. Either use io.discard if you don't care about the output or output to a buffer when you do. If you've enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy my daily email where I write daily about Go-related topics. Head over to boldlygo.tech daily to subscribe. And until next time, make it go.